you're watching News and Views informative programme on this Wednesday the 23rd of February. Very good afternoon to you, buenas tardes. And uh, in the first part of the programme we have Dr Venom with us, with the zoology section, and lots of uh, local news for you in the second part of the programme with Euronews in between. And um, we're going to be talking uh, about a special part of zoology, uh, but first of all I'm going to welcome Dr Venom to the programme. Good afternoon. Buenas tardes, Karen, how are you? I'm okay, thank you, I'm okay. Uh, we were talking earlier mm. um, about zoology in general mm. and there's lots of parts of zoology that people just are not aware of. For mm. instance, um, we talked about sea monsters which was a very, very popular subject mm. uh, uh, last time you were on and you could almost say this was a second part of cryptozoology yes. but what is cryptozoology? Okay, well, as you know, zoology has various different branches, as we've just mentioned. And one of the interesting parts of zoology is cryptozoology. And cryptozoology is basically um, an investigation into animals and creatures that are not yet actually classified by science. Uh. Now, we know that there are millions of species around the world. Now, all species are classified by a scientific name. They belong in a system of a film and a genus and a family. So they belong in a group, mm. be they spiders or insects or mammals. Every time a new species is discovered, it has to be taxonomically identified. So a taxonomic paper is produced in order to describe the species. Now, interestingly, we receive reports from around the world all the time about creatures that people have either seen or they have evidence um, may exist. And if you remember, um, we talked about various different creatures in past programs, such as the chupacabra, where, mm -hmm. where people have complained about this creature that they regard as a chupacabra in Mexico killing their livestock. Mm. But we do not have a holotype, which is a special specimen in order to describe and until a specimen is captured or found that creature is a cryptid and therefore it ah. belongs in the category of cryptozoology not zoology right ah that's interesting thank you thank you um and uh Thinking of uh, cryptozoology, you're also going to be talking of crop circles, Nazca lines, uh, aliens, UFOs, that sort of thing. And we're going to start with crop circles, aren't we? Well, that's right. I mean, today the subject that we are going to be talking about is we've been looking at various different types of animals that uh, may come under the category of cryptozoology. And as you know, we've covered chupacabras, we've covered um, the thylacine, which is an animal that existed but is now extinct, like the dodo. And and we've covered in, in a previous program sea monsters, which was extremely popular with viewers. And so we have now, because of the popularity, moved on to a new part of this special program, which is aliens. And mm. we're going to be looking at today the evidence of the existence of aliens and UFO sightings. Mm -hmm. Now, crop circles are interesting because crop circles are an interesting phenomenon that dates back thousands of years. Crop circles have been um, referenced in, in ancient text. Now, yes, these are know. huge, yeah. huge pictures created by we don't know who and that's the mystery who created them mm. it's impossible for people to create these circles within one night it would, you'd need loads of people to do that loads of them i never have loads of people been found creating these circles mm. these circles have just appeared um, overnight and many of them are extremely complicated mm. and you can only really appreciate the magnitude of these pictures from the air, not from down where the crop circles are being produced. No, because you can't see the patterns, can you? Exactly, when you're, you're exactly. actually there in now, front of Now, could these it? crop circles be symbols or mm. maps or markers? Now, that is a question mm. that we are pondering. And still pondering. Yes. <laughs> now, another picture that I did send you was the Nazca lines. Now, interestingly, when I was researching crop circles for this program, I came across an interesting crop circle which bared the form of a hummingbird. Ah, and right. in a completely, this was a completely unrelated article. This was about crop circles. And I remembered from my own experience of researching the Nazca lines mm. in the past that this crop circle with this hummingbird was so much similar 
to the huge hummingbird in the Nazca Lines. Now, the Nazca Lines were created by an ancient civilization, we don't know who, thousands of years ago, mm -hmm. so well before this crop circle was created. They are miles long, but can only be appreciated from the air. Mm -hmm. Now, thousands of years ago, ancient civilizations that we believe may have been behind the creations of the Nazca Lines would not have had the technology to view the Nazca Lines from above. That we know of. Yeah, mm. that we know of. Mm. Mm. Another interesting point there. Yeah. So did the aliens help them? Could have done, which leads us on to the Mexican alien. Yes. Now, as you know, we are always looking for evidence, mm. and that is the whole point of cryptozoology. We are looking for evidence of what could exist, what might exist, and what may have existed. And here, um, we have an interesting uh, specimen that was caught in a rat trap in Mexico. Now, um, this made big headlines in Mexico when it, was, when it um, was brought to light of the media. And they did conduct scientific investigations on it. Now, as far as I understand, the result or the analysis of that investigation was that um, it was confirmed that the DNA did not match any other animal. Right. That was known. That was known. So, yes, it was cryptozoology then. Yes, so mm. therefore this creature would be regarded as a cryptid until it is classified.